He was nothing. And then God breathed into him. And when God breathed into him, the man had a soul and he became alive. So we are, as people, we have a soul. And that soul is God. That's God deposited into a body. Okay. Now, when he's, so, so in that body, okay, we have a soul. And when we get saved, we have the Holy Ghost. Okay, and then we're operating in a body. It's like our body is a vehicle. It's like a car that the good stuff is on the inside. Now, as we look so that you'll know that God made us a soul, that he put a soul in us, let's go to Jeremiah 38, 16. You know, I just want to let you see it again so that you can actually know that we have a soul. There's a God in us, something that God created us to be because we are part of him that's on the inside of us. And this is what makes us important. <laughs> Jeremiah 38, 16. 38, 16. This is what makes us important. Hallelujah. So, the Dakar, the king, I probably said that wrong, swore secretly into Jeremiah, saying, As the Lord liveth that made us this soul, talking about the soul that's in us, I will not put thee to death, neither will I give thee into the hand of these men that seek thy life. Now, I'm pointing out that God made the soul that is in us. That means that what we carry is a soul, something that God put on the inside of us that is important. Mm -hmm. This is why we're important. We're not important because um, who my mommy and daddy is. We're not important based on where we were born at. We're not important because, hey, I'm, my parents are rich and I'm a rich kid, so I have a spoon in my mouth, so I'm important. Uh, you're not important because the governor is your dad. You know what I mean? You're not important based on who you were born to or what you have. Okay. You are important because God breathed his self inside of you. That's right. This is why you are important. Some of us in the past, hopefully this is of the past, and we're getting this word and becoming, um, changing our view of ourselves, you know, dealt with low self-esteem. Looking at ourselves as lowly, thinking that we're less than. That's right. You know, and all of that is not true. Come on now. Because we're basing that on, on what we see on the outside. Mm -hmm. And we're measuring ourselves with what on the, what's on the outside instead of actually recognizing who we really are. That's right. Okay. Let's go to John 3, 1. We're going to read. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, John chapter 3, verse 1. Now we're going somewhere with this, but we're just gonna lay what we're talking about so you can actually see, see the soul and what happens. And Jesus will tell us himself, you know, what we have to do to leave this place in our life and to go into the next place. Mm -hmm. When we get when we become, when we walk into the kingdom of God, one of the things we have to do is become new. Let's talk about this. Let's see this. Um, John 3, 1, it says, Then there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicholas. I never can say the names, right? A ruler of the Jews, the same came to Jesus by night. And he said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. No man can do these miracles that thou dost, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Very, very, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the, the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very, very, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is, a 
that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Mm -hmm. The wind bloweth where it lifteth, lis and thou heareth the sound thereof, but cannot tell where it cometh and where it goes. So everyone that is born of everyone that is born is of the spirit. Okay. So Jesus is saying how in order to see the kingdom of God, you have to be born again. Now let's break that down a little bit so we can have a clear understanding of that. Being born again, you know, to have to be born again, to be relearned again, because you have to, your mind has to be renewed, you have to think different, your motives have to change, you have to walk in holiness, all things, some things have to change, period. All right. And this is example as uh, if you're working at one job, okay? You leave that job and go to another company, okay? That means that you're no longer employed at that job anymore, the first job. So now you're at the second job, you have to relearn the program. You can't follow the same rules you followed at the other job. That's right. Because you're at a different place of employment. Yeah. Somebody else is paying you now, and you have to follow those systems to be a part of that company. That's right. Right? Now, you can also look at this in relationships. You know, um, if you have, if you're in a relationship, say you have um, children. You have one child, you have two children, and both of them are different. One child, you deal with one differently. But the other child, you have to deal with them differently because they're two different people. Okay, those that are new believers don't know about relationships, but relationship. If you got one girlfriend, okay, you're not that. That's not your girlfriend no more. Then you have a different girlfriend. That means you can't do the same thing you were doing with the first girlfriend with the second. They're two different people. That's right. It's the same thing with God. In the kingdom of God, when you're born, you're born into the world. The world has one system. It's completely different than the system of God. That's right. When you accept Jesus in your life, then that means you have to forget about the things of the world and learn the things of Jesus to see the kingdom of God. Yes. To operate into that kingdom, you have to be able to let go the past. Your mind has to think you have to be reprogrammed, you have to think different, yes. you have to have a different motive, That's and right. you have to stand different because you're in a different company. That's right. You're in a different kingdom now. That's right. you, are, uh, you are in a higher kingdom. The kingdom of God is above every kingdom. That's right. So that means that, okay, there's different standards. Yes. Okay? So <clears throat> this is real love, but, but to walk into our original self, you know, some things we have to let go. We have to allow a purification to take place so that we can actually become who God originally created us to be. Because we all have a soul. Come on, come on. Man. Okay? <clears throat> Romans 8, 14. Hallelujah. God is so wonderful to us. You know, um, I don't want to get ahead of myself. But God is so wonderful for those that, that want him and desire him. You know, this is part of the package. You know, of becoming and being transformed into his image. Hallelujah. But we'll get into that. Romans 8.14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For they have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Now, wait, we're going to pause right there. Because we read um, last week in Proverbs 29, 25, we read, the, the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Now, remember we talked about that. That we cannot be afraid of what people think 
You know, we can't be caught up in, in doing things for people because we're afraid about how they're going to feel, how they're going to think, how they're going to respond. What if I do this? What if they like this? What if they don't? You know, here it says, as we just read, that for as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That's right. Yeah. So that means we have to be led by God in everything that we do. Come on now. We can't just ask people. We can not ask. We just can't do what people want us to do. Because we feel obligated. Come on. Oh, they did this for me, so I gotta do this for them. Yeah. Or, oh, okay, this is what I oh, this is how we do it. This is how we always do it. I, I gotta do it, I gotta do this for them, or I gotta go this from them. This is what they they expect of me. It's what God wants you to do. That's right. That's the only thing that matters. Come on now. But God, that's what we were created to do. Alright, let's go. Okay, for many it was led by the Spirit of God that they are the sons of God. We have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. So we're not going to go back there. We recognize that we have to follow God and not people, right? But we have received the spirit of adoption where we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit. That means that we cry, Abba, Father. The Holy Ghost is in us. Bear witness with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Our Father is listening to us because we're connected to him. Man. That we are the children of God. And if the children, then hears, hears of God, joint heirs with Christ. That means that what is his is ours and what ours is his. That's right. This is what sonship is about. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. When you begin to walk with God and not with people. Yeah. When you begin to follow God and not follow people. People. When you begin to be in agreement with God and not with people, not with what you see. Because yes. we don't walk by sight, we walk by faith, right? Yeah. All right. So if that be, we suffer with him that we may also glorify together. Yes. Hallelujah. So even in our suffering, you know, if it is allowed, it's for God's glory. So we can rejoice in the fact that anything that we go through, God, some way, somehow, is going to be glorified. God is going to get the glory simply because we are his sons and daughters. All right. First Peter 2, 9. First Peter 2, 9. So knowing that God has given us a soul, that means that he made us to be original. There's no copies. Mm -hmm. There's no copies. So, so we can't fall into the trap of the world where the world all collectively try to follow the same trends. That's right. They try to follow each other. You know, like the, the latest trends now is for women to try to inflate their butt. That's the latest trend. Mm -hmm. But that's contrary to what God says to us. God says we're fearfully and wonderfully made. That's right. So we're, we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Why are we changing our bodies? Come on. Uh, are we changing our bodies from the world, which is not standing for holiness? For all different type of reasons, you know, I'm going too far. Just, you know, you know, if you're trying to make your butt bigger, that means you're trying to get attention, which means you're trying to get lustful looks. Come on, man. Which leads to sin. You know what I mean? Right. Adultery and all that. We're, we're going to go there later, but not right now. First Peter two and nine. But we are chosen, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation a peculiar people that we should show forth the praises of him that have called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Yes. That means we're not a copy. We are different. We are original. We're fearfully made. We are complete. Yeah. Complete. Meaning, if we are complete, we're made complete. Come on now. And, and so, being that said, that we're not people that are led by money. If we're complete in what God is ours and what and, and and what we have is God's, that means that we're already rich. Come on. We don't have to chase money. If we're not, if we're really got 
have the right motives, that means that we're not trying to get the latest bag or the latest car or the latest house. Not saying that God won't give it to us, because he will give it to us because the wealth of the wicked is our, hey, is our spoils. We get all that de delightful stuff. But the thing is that that's not in our heart. Meaning that if God says to give it away at the drop of a dime, we can give it away. That's right. Come on now. So we're not we're not led by money. Right. We're not led by people. Because there's no hell that a person can put us in. Come on now. There's nothing that a person can do to bring harm to us. Because no weapon forms against us will prosper. Right? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We're not moved by our responsibilities. We're not moved by sex, by approval, by lust, by flesh. We're not, we're not led by any of the stuff. You know, we are being purified so that we can walk in holiness. Yes, this is why we are important. Let's go back to Genesis 2, 7 and 8. Glory be to God. No, it's Genesis 2, yes, yeah, yeah, Genesis 2 and 7. Now, this is important for us to get. Because knowing this is really important because it's like, you know, it, it, there's so many things on this walk with God. There's so many things, there's some things to overcome. And as we overcome, we become stronger in what God called us to be. That's right. um, second, uh, second Genesis, no, Genesis 2 and 7. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The man became a living soul, and the Lord planted him and the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man who he formed, he had formed. Now, look at this here. The man was created first. He was whole and complete. Mm -hmm. He's complete. Right. Meaning that we are complete just as we are. That's right. Okay? That's right. So that means that we are not what we do. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times we get caught up in the motions that we are what we do, but we're not what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have titles, we have um, assignments that we're being given. We have some as fathers, mother, son, daughter, employee, employer, business owner, teacher, pastor, friend, sister, brother, minister, member, hallelujah. We have so many titles that we carry, right. so many responsibilities that we have. But our only response, true responsibility is to be a son and a daughter of God. That's right. That means to follow him, to seek him, and to be with him all the way. That's right. So that's like, let me tell you what this looks like. Have you ever been in prayer and you had a situation or a circumstance that's been on your mind and you're praying for it? And you can't you can't get out of prayer about that topic and worship God because you know God, you got to deal with this situation right here. I just, whoo! I, I can't think about nothing about this situation. And that's all you can talk about to God is that one situation. Come on, now. because it's like that situation is really troubling you, so you still stuck in that situation. You can't tell them thank you, hmm. praise you, God, Hallelujah, God, you're good because you're stuck in that situation. That is when your responsibilities have taken over. That's when your life, the, that's when you have looked at your responsibilities or the things that you're assigned over or the concerns of the things that you're assigned over. Um, you, you, may, you put it too high. Because God says for us to come and lay it at his feet. That's right. If we come and lay it at his feet, then we can worship him and not be so overwhelmed with worry about whatever the situation is. Right, right. You know, and it could be, you know, we can call things critical. It could be our parents. It could be our children. It could be our spouse. It could be our home. All these things could be critical. Yes, right. But there's nothing bigger than God. Come on now. 
Come on now. It's not bigger than God. God is bigger, so he comes first. That's right. That's right. He comes first. And we lay at his feet and we worship him and we thank God. We're like, God, whatever you want to do with this, God, I trust you. And you lay it down. That's when you become a son and daughter. Yes. Hallelujah. We begin, we cast down our titles, our assignments, and we become naked and not ashamed and, and love upon him because that's when you can become who God, that's when you become, when it says, I need you to love God with all your heart, your mind, and with your soul. And we talked about that in the last, um, um, the last messages. You know, when you do that, that means that you're letting go all the other stuff. Yes. And you're lo loving him. And as you're in his presence, he's taking care of the other stuff. Come on, He's taking care of the other stuff. We Come can't on. carry that. We weren't created to carry that. Yes. Now, even with these responsibilities that, that God has given us, these titles that God has given us, we have to make sure that we're always allowing God to lead us and guide us with it. Sure. Instead of um, handling it in our own um, knowledge and experience, because you know, you know, we remember we were born in the sin, so we have a way of handling things. That's right. But the way that we have learned in the past to handle things, you know, might not fit this kingdom. Mm -hmm. So that we have to handle the things differently, and that means we have to get before God. You know, regarding your, you know, your job, regarding your children, your spouse, regarding everything that's dear to you. You ask God, God, how do you want me to handle this? That's right. Come on now. You gave me this. You created me so you know my capabilities. You know what I'm able to do. I don't even know what all I'm able to do. But God, you know what I'm able to do. How do you want me to handle this? That's right. And as he tells you, you come in agreement with him. Yes. You know, it's the most interesting thing on earth. You know, Moses was like... You know, when Jesus came down, he came and said, hey, I want you to go talk to Pharaoh. He was like, hey, I can't even talk. Mm -hmm. And he said, who made your mouth? All right, come on now. You know, at that moment, Moses was comparing the way he talked with other people. Mm -hmm. So it's because he was comparing how he talked with other people, that means that, hey, I don't talk like them, so I definitely can't do it. Uh, come on, come on. Man. So instead of looking at it and being like, hey, God, well, Still. if you think I can do it, well, let's go ahead and try. <laughs> this is so funny for me because it's like when God would have me to do something, it's like, God, uh, really? You want me to do it? I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> but if you think I can do it, well, let's try. Somebody's going to listen. I don't know who's going to listen, but okay. And you'd be so surprised about the outcome. That's right. Come on. God is so good. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. So we have to do things God's way. We don't do things God's way. We're doing it the world's way. And if we're doing the world's way, we're going to get the world's results. That's right. You know, everything that God do is good. And he likes to be fruitful and to multiply. Yes. The world likes to be fruitful and multiply, but they do it in a dirty way. Mm. They do it with, you know, schemes and tricks and, and you know, just they just do it the wrong way. You know, and it might look good, but it's not right. Some way down the line, there's something wrong with that comparison. They, I don't know what they're doing, but something right because then it builds on a solid foundation of the Lord. Now, let's look at Colossians 3 and 5. Now, there are some things that can make it very difficult for us to walk in sonship. Okay. Now, just like we talked about, we have a soul, okay? We have, a, we have the Holy Ghost in us, and we are in our bodies, but there's a vehicle. Now, in the world, our bodies were in control. We was doing what we felt like we wanted to do. It didn't matter. We did what we wanted to do. That's right. But when we got saved into the kingdom of God, we have to crucify our flesh and do what the Lord wants us to do. That's right. Okay. Now, what that looks like, because when we don't do things the way that God wants us to do, and we're doing the way that our flesh wants us to do, that means that 
that we something is taking the place of God. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna read in Chronicles 3 5. Colossians, yes, not yes, Colossians 3 5. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fortification, uncleanness, inordinate affections, evil concupiscence. Yeah, you see that right? <laughs> and covetousness, which is idolatry. Okay, fortification is sex intercourse that is happening before marriage. All right. Uncleanness is um, physical lustful desire. Okay. These are definitions, but some are what you call synonyms. Inordinate affections are crazy affections that don't have no sense, pretty much. You can be sad, you can be joyful. It's, they're just feelings, okay? Evil concorpuscence is evil desires, forbidden lust. Convertness is greed. How do they desire more than what you have? This is all what you call idolatry. And that prevents us from receiving the kings of God, the things of God. Now, if I read this in the Amplified, it says, so put to death and deprive, and deprive of power of evil longings for your earthly body, which is sensual, self-centered instincts, and moral, immorality, imperfection, sinful passions, evil desires, and greed, which is a kind of idolatry because it replaces your devotion to God. So when you get entangled with these things, it places your devotion for God. Now, look at Ezekiel 18.4. 18, sure that it's crystal clear that we understand how God feels about our soul. The thing that he breathed into us. Mm -hmm. And when he breathed this into us, this is how we became one. That's right. So we're actually married to him. Hallelujah. Because we're one. Because he breathed into us. Now, now, now even though this happened to Adam, now we are born in another way, but it's still the same form. God puts our soul inside of our mom. It is pushed out. Mm -hmm. But we were created before we were actually on this earth. Sure. Ezekiel 18.4. It says, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth it shall die. So all the souls belong to God. When we're done with this life, mm -hmm. our soul is not going anywhere. Okay. You know, our flesh, hallelujah, well, is, is dirt, so it's going to go back to the ground. But our soul is going either to heaven mm -hmm. or hell. That's right. There's no in between. Come on now. There's only one or two. Yes, sir. Now, when you go to Proverbs 632, we're going to make some things clear here. Now this is a few things that, that makes us, makes it very difficult for us to be whole. Because God breathed his breath into us. But when we start to commit, um, when we start to have fornication and all that, we begin to get tangled up with somebody else's soul. Come this is what you called um, soul ties. You know, your soul begins to grow out, and if you are one that has sex with multiple people, that means your part of your soul is here, and a part of your soul is here, your part of your soul is over there, right. and now you don't know who you are because you're just spread it out. Come on now. Not only did you spread it out, you got some souls added to you. It's like, okay, <laughs> who are you? Now you have to pray that God will restore your soul as you can. Okay, Proverbs 6, 32. But whoso committed adultery with a woman lacked understanding, 
He that doesn't destroy is his own soul. Mm. When you become involved in relationships, sexual relationships, you're hurting your own soul. That's right. The thing that God breathed into you, the very first thing, before you got all your responsibilities, before you got all your assignments, the very first thing that was the most important thing, you begin to hurt. Now, let me tell you about the devil. The devil is very cunning, okay? Yeah. Come on. He's very cunning. And he will try to present something that will be absolutely pleasurable for your flesh. Mm -hmm. And he will wiggle it, you know, as a carrot in front of you and let you know how well this is going to feel and, yeah. and this is going to bring great pleasure to you. And, and the pleasure is so great because what the enemy steals is so great. Yes. That means that the devil is not telling you that when you're between her legs, that he's stealing, you know, he's stealing your house, I'm stealing your career, I'm stealing your ministry, uh, you know, and you know, you don't know in 10 years, you don't know what's gonna happen because this sickness is gonna come on to you because of this. He's not telling you what he's doing. That's right. Because you're hey, this, this woman. Mm -hmm. Women, women, you don't know what you're doing when you when you're like when you're bringing the man home just because you have a D appointment. You don't know what you're doing That's right. to your own soul. Come on now. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord help us. 2 Peter 2.14. Now, these are all scriptures and it's in your words, in your Bible. I'm not making this stuff up. I'm showing it to you in the scriptures so you can actually see it for your own self. God does give us the strength to deny our flesh. Come on. There is, a, a, he has overcome everything in the world. Yeah. But we have to want, we have to want and do what necessary has to be done so we don't fall into the sins of our own flesh. Yes. That means that you can't watch anything on TV. Right. You can't watch nudity on TV. You cannot, TV or the movies or your phone or your laptop. You can't watch nudity. You can't watch sex scenes. If romantic movies and music, you know, get you in the mood, you cannot listen to it. You have to close all doors that have access to you getting into that mood. Now, even though you can be like, well, I can't see this nudity. You know, that's not going to harm me. But what you don't know is that that's a seed. It's a seed and eventually it grows. And you be like, well, I like looking at that body. You even gotta watch social media. Mm -hmm. Social media have bodies that don't look bad mm -hmm. on there. I was on social media just minding my own business. And this man just popped up on my screen, you know, just punctuating his chest. You know, your eyes wanna be like, oh, why don't you have a look? Like, oh, the devil is a liar. Let me get this off my, you know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. You could be walking in the grocery store. Oh, no. And as you're walking in the grocery store and you're walking around, you see all these butts and, and chests and all that stuff just, just punctuating at you. Mm -hmm. You have to tell your eyeballs, you are not looking at that. Mm -hmm. You have to tell your eyeballs, I'm not going to look at that. And you're going to look over there. Mm -hmm. Your eyes will say, oh, you want to see that. And you're, you have to tell your, no, you're not. Come on now. Let's be real here, okay? Second Peter 2.14. I'm reading from the Amplified. It says, they have eyes full of adultery, constantly looking for sin, enticing and luring away unstable souls, having hearts trained in greed. They are children of a curse. Woo! So there's people out there who see, oh, they weak. Oh, they weak. They want me. Uh -huh, I'm gonna take that one home tonight. You know, they see that stuff. The enemy sees. Okay, I'm gonna get that one. I'm gonna try. But you gotta be strong in the Lord. You gotta like flee like Joseph did. He left his coat when that woman was after his body. Like, oh no, I'm getting out of here. Before I fall, I'm getting out of here. Okay? That's right. 
right. Now, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, we're going to read about who these people are. These people is crazy. They are defying God. Boldly. So, you know, oh my goodness. There's people that boldly prowl around looking for, for sex. Mm-hmm. That's their goal. You know what I'm saying? They're walking around dressed all sensual, sexy. They got them inflated butts, <laughs> them tight skirts. I'm not, listen. Women entice men. Alright now. Let's keep going. Second Timothy 3, 3, 1, 1, 1 through 9. This know also that in the last days, previous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, coverts, boasting, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections. That means that there are men sleeping with men, women sleeping with women. That's what um, without natural affections is. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontentment, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. That means that they love to please their flesh more than they love to please God. That's right. So they're walking around doing crazy. Let me tell you what this is what it looks like. In a pure form, this is what this looks like. You know, a little child, they like to run and do things. See a child just running as the fastest they can into the middle of the street. Mm-hmm. Can be hit by a car, but they have a blast. Mm-hmm. Right? The parents chasing them, trying to stop them. That's what this looks like. Come on now. When you when you chasing after the flesh, trying to do things of the flesh, you're running right into destruction. That's right. This, don't go that way. Don't do it. Don't do this. Oh no, I gotta have it. I gotta have it. And you're, you're about to kill yourself. Come on now. Flesh will get you right into hell. That's right. Mm. Alright, let's go. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. Oh, those are even the worst. The ones that says they're Christians, mm-hmm. but still doing what they want to do. Mm-hmm. That is dangerous. Right. How are you going to know of God and not do God's way? Come on now. It's like, oh, let's see, keep going. For the sons are they, for, remember, for, for this sort are they which, which creep into houses and leave captive, captive silly women that are with sins. Lead away with divers lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So they're always hearing the word, and it's never hitting. It's never hitting their heart. It just they can't get grab a hold of it. Mm. You know, they walk right out the building, or they stop listening to the message, and they go and do what they want to do. Come on now. Now as as now as James and Damaris withstood Moses, so. So do these also resist the truth. Men men's of con- corrupt minds, reprobate concerning of the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly should be manifested to all men as there always was. So God's going to expose that stuff. Come on, man. Okay, I got to move fast. Okay, quickly. Genesis 6 and 7. Yeah, I might have to just write this stuff down. Okay, it was Genesis, 6, 6, Genesis 3, 6 and 7. When a woman saw that these trees was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eye, and, and a tree to desire to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband, and he did eat. And their eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig trees together and made themselves aprons. What does that mean? When they bit of the sin, then their eyes became open. Mm-hmm. This is what happens. If you are always looking at nudity, pornography, you know, sex scenes, guess what? Your view and your perception of things becomes different. Come on, man. That means you see things differently. When you see a person walk into the room, you don't just see a person, you see their body. 
Yes. You look at them as a piece of meat. You look at them like, what you got working with? What you got? What you working with? Or what you got that I don't have? You know, you begin to compare. You begin to you begin to evaluate. Yeah, come on now. You know, their figure and all that stuff because you've tasted the forbidden fruit. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. You know, so in other words, you begin to see butts, muscles, and all types of bills. You know, because you're you dabbled in the wrong place when you weren't supposed to go. Come on now. Romans 8, 19, 21. Write it down, okay? For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestations of the sons of God. This is the most important part of this whole thing, okay? For the creation was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who have subject the same in hope. Because the, create, because the creature of itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the Christ children of God. What that says is that God had it set up so that you will become something that you weren't created to be so that he can deliver you and become who you who he created you to be. Amen. So in Amen. other words, it's set up so that you were born into sin so he can watch you be delivered and come out of sin. All right, come on. It says the creature was made subject to vanity. That means, okay, in another translation it says um, everything God made was allowed to become like something that he could not fulfill his purpose. So we were created to be the, the soul that was poured into us. We was created and designed to do a thing. Okay. But the thing that we were born into was sin that made it completely impossible for us to be who God created us to be. Because we had to be delivered. We had to be changed. We had to deny our flesh. We, we had to be delivered from fear so we won't do what people want us to do so that we can become who God created us to be. It's like the wildest thing. It's like, whoa! God is able to deliver us from the devil. Yes. So we get to Luke uh, 22, and I'm just going to talk about it. You know, when Jesus... He starts to pray because now he has to go a little bit further and to fulfill God's will. And he, he's praying because now he has to face the cross, which is the most painful thing in his entire life. Okay, but he did it for us. But he prayed and he said, God, not my will, mm -hmm. but your will. That's right. Uh, so in other words, he went to God. He went not, not carrying the weight of Oh, I gotta do this for them, and you know, God, they ain't right. You know what they did, and, and you know, you know how we do. God, you know, you know, you know this ain't right because they ain't worth it. You know, I don't know why I gotta forgive them. You know what they did? They did this three times. No, no, no. God went to God went to His Father and said, "Not my will, God, but Your will be done." That's what a son and daughter of God is. God, I don't know. God, this is too hard for me, but not my will, but but Your will be done. God, okay, I'm going to have to ask you again because I need some grace. I need to feel the grace that God, not my will, if, you know, if this can be passed for me, okay, God, but if not so, let give me the grace to do your will. Come on now. Okay. Amen. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 through 4. Hallelujah, I'm going real fast because I got not a lot of minutes left. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For, for this is the holy duty of man. Mm -hmm. For God should bring every work into judgment and every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Mm -hmm. So everything that we do, the only thing important for us to do is to follow God. Right. It doesn't matter for us to follow the trends of the world. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter for us to try to be like other people. It doesn't matter, you know, if I, if, if, if I don't sound like them, I can't do it. It doesn't matter. Right. Whatever God I don't care what I look like. I don't care how I sound. But God, if you want me to do it, I must be able to do it. So let's right. do it. Come on now. Because that's all that matters. Who wants to get to heaven and be like, okay, everything I did didn't count? Who wants to do that? Mm. That means I wasted a whole lot of time. Come on now. All right. Corinthians 15, 58. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. <laughs> Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For so as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Whatever you do is not in vain. 
Hallelujah. Philippians 3, 7, 14. This is, this is, this is uh, Paul. He gave his whole life, his whole life, to do what God wanted him to do, to spread the gospel. Right. He gave up everything, right. all of his privileges and his benefits and celebrations to follow God. He died. Mm. That means he died to the flesh. I mean, the flesh didn't get what he wanted. Okay. Right. But, okay, Philippians 2, 7, 4, Philippians 3, 7 through 14. But what things are gained to me that I count loss for Christ? Yet doubtless I count all things but loss for, ex for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my okay. Lord. For I have suffered the loss of all things mm -hmm. and do count them but dumb. That means he count the things that he gave up as, as poo poo. Come on there was nothing yes. that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. Mm. The righteousness which the God of my faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made comfortable unto his death. If by any means I might attain the resurrection of the dead, not as though I have already attained, neither were already per per perfect, but I have after, if that, I have apprehended that, which also I apprehended Jesus Christ. That means that all the power and everything that I experienced with God, nothing is more important than knowing you. Come on, man. Nothing is more important than being in your presence. Yes. You know, it's not about the miracles, it's about you, God. It's not about my responsibilities. Right. It's about me experiencing and loving on you yes. and, and spending time with you. So forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things that are ahead. Hallelujah. I press towards the mark of the highest price in Christ Jesus. Yes. That means I'm letting all that stuff go. None of that matters. Come on, man. Nothing matters. Thank you, Jesus. Because I can't take it with me. That's right. When I die, I die. Yeah. Not with my clothes, not with my jewelry, not with the come fancy on. hairstyle, everything. Come on, come on. It's just me, it's my soul that goes to meet the, meet the Lord. Yes. So, we just want to examine ourselves. And we want to just really look at ourselves and begin to examine us. Mm -hmm. What What are some of our hindrances and what are the things that, is there anything that we put before God? Is it people, family, career jobs, you know, pleasure, mm -hmm. my opinion, what I think, my goals, what I want to achieve in life, my ministry, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Is God the head of it? Or I'm doing it be because of evil motives? Oh, I got something to say, really? Is it friends? Friends, are you chasing the world? Money? The view of myself? World view, the world models, you know, the world, world's trends. Mm. We want to really just examine ourselves Come on, man. to make sure that we're letting go of all that stuff mm -hmm. because we are important. Yeah. Hallelujah. Father, let us let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, oh God, for, for blessing us, oh God, and letting us know that we are important and that you created us perfectly and complete. Father, we pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you will restore our souls, God. Restore our souls. Bring us back to our original self. And let us be who you created us to be and all that you created us to be. Father, we pray, oh God, that you deliver us from every idol, from everything that will hinder us, oh God, from walking in your love and doing all that you want us to do. Father, deliver us from the wrong view. Deliver us from uh, sinful desires, God. Father, we want you and you alone. God, and we just give you all the honor and praise. And we still just pray the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. We thank you for listening. We thank you for joining us. We ask that you like and share. Have a good night.